Hello, my name is Grant Fritchie. I work for Redgate Software. Today, I want to talk to you about the cloud. Yeah, I want to talk to you about the cloud. Um, main reason I want to talk to you about the cloud is because um, you guys are going there. We're seeing more and more uh, movement there, um, surveys, um, um, activity within the, the monitoring stuff that we do on, on our products. And uh, Redgate Software is very much aware that you are on your way to the cloud. Um, and uh, hey, we're right there with you. Uh, we want to go to. And so we want to help, we want to support you, and we want to help you out with that. Now, one of the things we're going to do to help you out with that is we're talking about monitoring. Uh, monitoring on the cloud um, doesn't really change. Um, you want to know if your servers are available or not. That's pretty important. Uh, you want to have some concept of what's going on with those servers. Um, do you have long running queries? Do you have blocks? Do you have locks? Um, a lot of the same types of issues, a lot of the same types of problems that you can experience within the work that you're doing um, in a local on-premises SQL Server instance, you're going to hit the same types of issues, whether we're talking about um, uh, a database as a service with Azure SQL Database, or whether we're talking about instances as a service with managed instances. And here's the great news. If you are trying to track that kind of information, we support both Azure SQL Database and Azure Managed Instances. So uh, let's take a look at how those things work within Redgate SQL Monitor right now. All right, this is monitor.redgate.com. This is a, a live um, a monitoring uh, of, of a whole bunch of SQL Server instances uh, under management by Redgate and you can go here and take a look at it yourself. Um, and if you notice right here, we've got a separate area for Azure SQL DB. We've got those monitored off, and we can drill down on that particular um, object and see more information. Now it's gonna load up. So you can see, despite the fact that this is an Azure SQL database, um, we've got multiple things going on. Uh, you can see the CPU memory I/O and weights um, within that server. Um, even though it's not, you know, a, a traditional server, it's still, you know, the kind of thing that we're used to looking at. You can see that there's been alerts. We've had some deadlocks. Um, very much a performance issue. Something you're going to want to keep an eye on. You can see those. Um, if you scroll down just a little bit, you can see the top five queries, uh, um, the top ten weights. Um, and then details about each of these things. So what's going on on that server? Um, and if there's any guidance around these kinds of things, QDS async queue, query data store async queue is maybe causing some weights here. Um, possibly not, who knows? But you can see that there's activity going on. Some queries are running long. Um, duration in milliseconds is 594,000. That's certainly a concerning query, right? Um, You've got other query metrics, um, blocked processes, how is the database doing in size, log growth, and all that fun stuff. And so we've got full-blown monitoring available for Azure SQL Database. Now let me switch back over to uh, my machine. Now this is my local machine, and um, um, so the activity here is going to be pretty radically different than what you would see in, on a real production server. The main reason I'm coming here is I want to show you how, how you can connect up um, we're going to click on Add Server, and it's going to open up locally, and we can see, we're going to take just a look at this server and edit the credentials on it. And you can see that we've, you know, it's marked as an Azure SQL Database um, server. Um, it knows that the login I'm using is a SQL Server login, and I can provide my login name and password. Um, and so it, it behaves differently. Um, now I do have to use you know the the whole full blown thing. Um, I definitely would have to set up the firewall on my Azure instance to ensure that I can get through. Um, but you can see that we can make the connections and set them up. And then once they're there, you've got full monitoring, um, alerting, all that fun stuff um, that you can uh, do exactly like you can do in the, in the um, on premises servers you can get into your Azure SQL database servers and, and understand what's happening and what's going on on those servers. And, and it's vital 
that you were able to see this kind of information. So even though in, in this instance, uh, what we're looking at here um, is a very limited set of data because I've just recently got it set up on my, on my machine and my local machine is going to be turned on, turned off, and you're not going to see the kind of monitoring metrics you would see if you were collecting the data 24-7. You know, but you get an idea of what's going on. And so all of this is available for you for Azure um, so you can see what's going on within your host of instances, within your um, um, platform as a service offerings, and so you can keep an eye on your systems and take responsibility of them uh, the same as you would anything else. All right, so hopefully that was helpful. You've got some idea of, of what we've got in the monitoring uh, area within, within the cloud, within Azure, um, within these types of things, and you've got some aspects of, of you know, what's going on. Now, never forget that just because you've moved to the cloud doesn't mean you've, you know, woo, no more responsibility for me. Um, it's still your data. It's still your information. There's still your queries. There's still your tables. You do need to keep an eye on these things. Um, you need to know what's going on with them and, uh, you know, manage them uh, in a proactive way. And um, we're here to help. My name is Grant Fritchie. I work for Redgate Software. Thank you.